Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're talking about the top five mistakes that experienced window cleaners make. I know, we all think it's the rookies that make them, but here's the lessons if you're new or you're old, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? Uh, I just want to say thank you, first and foremost, this week to everybody who puts orders in for me. Um, it's amazing. Uh, you guys really, really do go above and beyond and make sure that I'm able to put those orders in, and it really does mean a lot. I know there's a lot of you that order quite regularly, and maybe it doesn't feel like I appreciate it, but I really, 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 really appreciate you guys putting orders in through me so thank you so much um but if it's your first time here have a look around uh there's a heck of a lot of videos and content to go back on hopefully it's better than a cat video make sure you binge everything you possibly can but if you're one of the cool kids you got the the sticker that i can't point to backwards by the way the sticker we're building culture how cool is it to have this stick it's the dumbest thing ever i know people laugh but uh if you want the sticker just put an order in with me my number is 862-312-2026. Just shoot me a message and be like, yo, Jersey, everything is in my cart. It doesn't cost you any extra. We'll put that in. But let me know you want a sticker because that means you watch Nation. And that is a limited edition sticker, which means nothing in the world of random stickers. But what it does mean is as a cool kid, not only do you get the sticker, but the next time we do it. So this batch runs out, we make another batch with a completely different custom sticker. Then when that one runs out, we get another one. So eventually you're going to have like buckets of like five different iterations, all custom decals. And I have to say the coolest thing, why I have all stickers anyway, is because we're like building culture in a business. Um, if you guys have ever had any other business, this culture doesn't exist. Like we're making it cool to do what we do. So anyway, virtual high five you guys but literally that's how i make my cheddar putting orders in through me is absolutely amazing and it makes my day and i do a little jig every single time uh, but again 862-312-2026 i want to be your rep anyway thank you i did want to say thank you sometimes it does get missed and uh i'm sorry but i do really really appreciate it so thank you guys for the cool kids thank you to everybody who's getting stickers posting pictures right now we got a contest going on we're going to do contests every single month um, that is just like show your sticker and get some free, well, like win some free stuff. And the only people who get it are people like you who are watching or listening and ordering through me. So anyway, shameless plug it done. But today we're actually talking about the top five mistakes that experience window cleaners make. And I know, I know that most of us are like, well, yeah, that was a rookie mistake, right? You've heard that a guy must be new, but there's new stuff there's little simple things right there's like not charging extra for a storm window compared to a regular window or something where you're like oh that's a rookie mistake you'll learn that one fast but there's a ton of mistakes that guys like me guys like some of you who have been in the business for a long time mess up they get stuck in their ways there's a lot of that stuff that comes across and i see it old timers are like i've been in the business for 20 years and I still use wooden ladders, or I've been in the business for 25 years, and uh, I still, you know, fill in the blank. There's so much out there that that guys are still doing because that's how they started, right? They're still using sharpened paint scrape or yeah, sharpened paint scrapers as razors on glass. What? What? It's nuts. It's nuts. But again, it is what it is. There's even guys out there who will argue the fact that the old technology is still better when things move. And I, I say it's kind of a joke, but if you ever seen somebody with like a hairstyle from the eighties, they still have it. Now you see him like up at the mall that no one goes to malls. So fill in the other blank that doesn't date me, but uh, go <laughs> see somebody walking by and it's like a chick with a mullet or like big teased bangs or something. And you're like, okay, so that person had this hairstyle and they froze at some point in their life. They're just were like, this is it. I'm every time I go in, I go to the same haircut, same, and then all of a sudden, twenty years goes by, they have the same haircut. It's kind of that same concept. A lot of guys out there, are like I only use Ederate. That's what I used for twenty years. I've never tried anything else. It's like, man, there's so much stuff out there that that just doesn't make sense to not give it a shot. 
So there's a few mistakes. By the way, if you're new, you're still going to get something out of it because eventually, just like a kid, you're like, whoa, I've been in business for a year? That's crazy. And next you'll be like, oh, I've been in business for six y- years? And you'll be like, that's not right. I got to do the math. Yeah, six years. It's crazy how fast it goes. And there's a lot of stuff that you just don't innovate all the time because you're too busy working and building this thing that you're creating. So you'll get something out of this too, I promise. Hope it's better than a cat video, but either way, starting off at number five, uh, the number five is going to be equipment. And I put it there because I'm a sales guy. If you didn't know, 862-312-2026, not kidding. But I am a salesman, so putting that in there, I bet you that's probably... I would say my number one or two normally on the list, but I want to put it in five so you guys don't think that I'm just uh, pushing sales. That's not my agenda. But the thing is, is that guys are still using sponges. And if that's what you like, cool. But there's huck towels. Huck towels are better than sponges all day. There's still guys out there, like I said, using wooden stack ladders. That's nuts. You know, a section of stack ladder now is six pounds. It weighs six pounds for a section. How much do you think the wood ones weigh? I don't know because I've never seen them even in real life. There's still guys out there that are just using equipment that they've used forever and they've never tried anything new. There's so many new innovations. There's so many new things. The bucket on a belt game is huge. The dry walker, I love that thing. Work on the clamps. But I love that thing. Uh, The silencer, it's a $200, $225 bucket on a belt. It's awesome. A new trad pole. There was no extension poles that were carbon fiber. Like, that's new. There's so many things that people kind of fight almost. Or they don't realize that being new, not everything is great. There's some new things you're like, well, that's really dumb. You try to use it and you're like, yeah, it's not. that's not a thing. Like a rinse bar. A lot of guys use rinse bars. i just not a fan of rinse bars. I try them. They're on my brushes. They use them sometimes for like um, hydrophobic stuff. But I'm not a fan of rinse bars. I digress. The big one is water fed though. Water fed to me, and again, I'm the sales guy, so take it with a grain of salt. But water fed is the greatest tool that's ever come out in our in our business. Ever. Ever. Water fed. I can't use it in someone's living room. I know. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me you're faster with a squeegee. That's not right. That's what somebody who's never used water fed or doesn't use water fed currently says. No one ever has used water fed or has water fed systems that are new and up to date and they use it all the time. They go, well, I'd rather water feed or uh, traditionally clean a two and three story than water feed because it's just so much fat. No one says that. The people who say that are people who don't own water feds or they owned one back in the eighties or that one lady told me you better not use that water pole. Like those are the people it's fighting the technology. There's so many good products out there that are just game changers that you have to get on board. Waterfed is one of them. Please, if you if you've never thought about getting into Waterfed, please do. It's absolutely amazing. But I see a lot of guys doing that. I, I know guys that are still using. Um, I had a guy just two, well three days before I recorded this. Not that the dates actually matter, but the guy told me that one of the guys he works with sharpens his uh, paint scraper for windows mind-boggling he's like oh it's great it's so stiff what what why would you do that you could buy a triumph for a razor six inch razor with like a blade so thin that if you cut yourself you don't even feel it that's a horrible sales point but it's so thin that you can push it on the glass and and using a razor you got to push on the glass so it contours gets underneath that and it's so fast and so easy and they're disposable you're not sharpening a paint scraper come on but there's still people out there that do that. There's still people out there who found the right thing or the right equipment, the right squeegee, right? The brass on brass. You know that one? It's like a brass little handle and it's bolted onto a brass channel. Like there's, we still tons of those. And by the way, if you use that, that's cool. Again, all this stuff, it's cool if you try it, but there's so many things out there. Try an Edray Pro Plus handle. Try a... Uh, ninja handle. You ever seen a wide body handle? There's so many better things. There's things that pivot. There's there's uh, uh, wider handles. I got bigger hands. Like they fit better. They're comfortable. There's rubber grips. The things don't fall out of your hand. They they got quick connects. You can go between channels without having a bunch of different. 
There's so many innovations that people who miss the boat on the equipment, they really do themselves a disservice. So equipment, I'm not going to harp on it anymore, is a big one, though. If you think you're not updated on equipment, I'm always more than happy to explain equipment, even if you're not buying something. Remember that. Um, let's talk equipment. We'll see why something's better than, than the other. But equipment, it's cheap, too. Try all of the rubber out there. There's guys that still use Ederay. Ederay is a great rubber, but they've never tried anything else. Maybe you like something else better. Try it. But that's number five. It's new equipment. Get on board. Try the new stuff. And if you're not in water fed, I don't know why. Get into water fed. Um, But uh, number four on the list of the five uh, mistakes that experienced window cleaners make is not having systems. Now, I talk a bunch about systems because I sold my window cleaning company, for anybody who doesn't know, about a year ago. Uh, it was done, uh, finished up about a year ago and I don't have a window cleaning company anymore. What I do with windowcleaner.com with sales and media and everything else is just, there's a ton of stuff to do. I don't clean anymore. But with that being said, I still build systems into my day to day now. And now here's a big thing. Guys will start off and not have systems and they'll just do things the same way forever until they decide they want to hire somebody and you're trying to train somebody, you're like, I don't know, clean the wind. Like, if there's no systems in how you do things, things start to get missed. Over time, you will miss things. And then all of a sudden, two years go down the road, and you're like, I have not collected an email from somebody in two years. How did I miss that? You got to have systems. You have to update that part of it. You have to update the system side to make sure that everything's getting done every single time. Because throughout time, there's certain things that yield more than others. Certain things and certain seasons that things don't seem to be as important as others, but systems correct that. With that being said, I don't think that there's anything in this world of business that's harder than creating systems when there was no systems and you're 20 years in. So, by the way, new guys, systems, create systems. This is why when you go to McDonald's, I always talk about McDonald's. You can fill in the blank with anything else. When you go to McDonald's, there's little pictures back in the in the um, uh, kitchen area, if you call it that, that show you where the cheese goes in contrast to the lettuce on a burger. Every single time. And yes, people still mess it up. There's pictures all across the internet, right? But every single McDonald's, there's pictures showing people how it happens. What do you do? Well, first you lay the bun out flat. You put the bun out. You put the saw. This is how you do it. It's exact instructions. They've built a system so that when somebody comes in and they buy McDonald's, they hand them a book and go, here is a McDonald's. Everything in this book shows you exactly how to be a McDonald's. That's systems. Systems allow things not to change, not to deviate from where they are. They don't change over time. You can change a system, right? If you've done things so long a certain way and you go, you know what, I found a better way. Change the system. doesn't mean it's a forever thing, but it means that going forward from that day, that is how you do it. Systems are huge, but they're super, super hard. Building systems, the biggest one is going to be marketing. Like your marketing calendar, there's a lot of guys that have been out there for a while and they go, you know what, I don't even advertise. Cool. If you are totally capped off and you don't need any more business, that's awesome. Like, that's awesome. What about if you could make your business stronger? There's there's customers that you have right now that are not super awesome. They're not your favorites. You're not making a lot of money on them. They're a pain in the butt. What if you could get rid of those and bring on some new ones? Like, you can always be stronger. You can always make more money. You can always be a healthier company. Raise up your net. Raise up your net profit, Right? You can always be better. So building those systems is going to create from here on out how to change things, right? A system could be as simple as uh, our minimum going forward is 149. I'm sorry to little old ladies with six windows. I do really do feel bad for that, but we're just not the company for that. My minimum is 149. My minimum is 199. It's whatever you want it to be. That is a system. It is done every single time. It's written down, you know. You don't ever deviate off of your system. If you're going down the road and it's five years later and you're like, my minimum's 179 now. Change it in the system, but keep it that way from there on out until it changes again. 
Like making sure your systems are, you're going to know how the process happens in the beginning when you go to every customer's house. We have systems because we run employees. If you have employees, you have to have in systems because I want every employee to do the exact same process the exact same way. And if they're not, they're not following the system. They're not doing it how I want. When our staff goes to a house, they're going to talk to the customer the exact same way, introduce themselves. The secondary guy uh, on the, the tech on the team is going to set up the same exact way. All of that because they're going to collect the same information from each person. They're going to get paid from each person. The whole process from start to finish, in the beginning and the end of a uh, uh, um, sale, I guess, or a job, is the exact same. And I know when they come back, I know they're going to have the information. I know they're going to have the check. I know they're going to have signatures. I know they can have everything because it's a system. Everybody does it that way. That's how we do it. If there's ever something better that comes along, we change it. Beautiful. But it has to be systems. The old timers, it's hard for you guys to create a system. But definitely, definitely think about that. Uh, number three on the list of the top five mistakes that experienced window cleaners make is uh, not focused on selling the company. Now, if you're selling your company or you're not selling your company, this still is completely relevant and I'll explain why. A company has value when others deem it to have value. All of us put our blood, sweat, and tears into our companies. It's true. All of us did. Like, There's none of us who just floated through and it just magically happened. It just didn't happen. But our blood, sweat, and tears don't matter. It's the end result that matters. I don't care how hard you worked as compared to how light you worked. What matters when I'm buying a company or valuing a company, valuing a company, I can't talk, is what it's worth at this particular point. And a lot of us, I've been cleaning for 20 years. It's just me. I make $100,000 a year. I'm going to sell this thing for $100,000. No, no. No one's going to buy that. You have a list. Like, no one is going to give you $100,000 for a list. A list. You understand that. If your equipment's old, if you're, uh, you're not running staff or anything like that, all you are is a list of names. And those people are not guaranteed to come back. But a lot of times, people get too late. They find out that I sold a business. Then they're like, hey, I got some questions for you. I'm planning on retiring next year. And I want to know how to get my business ready to sell. Well, you get a time machine and you go back 20 years. Unfortunately, that's the truth of the matter. If you're giving your business to your kids or family or somebody else is taking it on, but it's still your business, it still has to be valuable. Systems are more important than ever because you have to have something of value. But look at, are you doing contracts? Are you doing route agreements? Are you building anything worth value other than just a list of names? Here's a big problem is that when you get a company, when you buy a company and they're not planned on selling it, they just all of a sudden they, you know, their their wife got sick and they gotta sell it, what do you get? You literally get a spreadsheet of names. I mean, we're simplifying this, you probably get more, but you get a, a spreadsheet of names and a calendar of work. And then you show up and people go, Who are you? Oh, we we just took over this business. Oh, so Ed's not doing it anymore? No. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I really like Ed. That person's not calling you back because they hired Ed. They didn't hire that company, right? So there's a lot of things that go into it that you have to focus on the sales side of things that really do change how everything's done from there on out. And the sales side, you have to make a company worth something. A lot of guys, and this is the sad truth, have put 20... 25, 30 years into a business, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, they've been working six days a week, doing all this stuff, and they've had 20 or 30 years of making a good income. They've had the freedom. They've done all that. But now they have a business that's not worth anything. Or it's worth a heck of a lot less. I'm totally interested in buying someone's list of clients. Totally interested. You got a calendar of work and a list of clients? I'll buy it. But you're doing $100,000 worth of work. I'm going to give you a couple thousand dollars. And that's just in the hope that I get it back. The other thing is, is that if no one buys your company, they're going to go out on the market and look for another window cleaner. And if you're good enough, they probably will go to you. If your SEO is good, uh, if your marketing is good, and all that fun stuff. By the way, SEO, Justin Monk. I got to throw his name out there. Cool dude, by the way. Um, but that is the big thing is you have to have a company that's worth value because you've worked so hard to build something. It has to be worth something. So focus on that again, new equipment is number five, 
New equipment helps your business be worth more because if I'm selling a, a business and I got all this equipment, I've made my money 10 times over, but I've had equipment for a year or two. It's all brand new equipment. I got the nicest trucks, the night, whatever. I'm selling assets. Assets are just important, right? Number four is no systems. You got to have those systems. If you have systems in place, you hand somebody a big book and you go, this is how we do things. This is what you're buying. You're buying my company. How we do things, boom, right? And uh, not focus on selling the company. All those things in the first three kind of tether together in their own uh, aspects, definitely big. Another one that uh, people are very, very guilty of, and I was guilty of for a very long time, is not raising prices. It's number two on the list because it is so stinking important. We get complacent. We do the work. We go, man, that was a great year. Next year, I like that. I went great. Same price as last year. Boom. What you don't realize is that every single year, the value of a dollar changes. You have inflation, you have everything else that all comes down to the dollar amount. Now, say you did $100,000 the first year. You got all the same people back the second year, did $100,000. Guess what? You are not making $100,000. That is not a real $100,000 because inflation has changed. The uh, cost of living increases have changed. All that fun stuff has changed, and the average is 2%. So you just made 2% less. On $100,000, you just made $98,000. Like, man, I don't know how I made $98,000. Last year, I made $100,000. I did the same thing. I don't get You've made less because of that percentage. So you have to increase prices. The other thing is that if you don't increase prices, what happens is all of a sudden, the next thing you know, it is four or five years later, you haven't increased prices. Not only have you made 2% less every single year, compounded on itself, but now you have to raise prices and you have to go to people and be like, uh, yeah, sorry, we're raising prices 20%. We just have to. They're like, 20%? It's the boiled frog idea. The boiled frog idea, which by the way has been proven not to, I don't know how they proved it, it's kind of morbid, but uh, is that a frog put in a pot on a burner, lukewarm water. It sits in there and you turn the burner on low. Eventually the water will boil, but it will be so small and so um, steady that the frog won't understand it's boiling or that it's too hot because every time it gets a little bit hotter by one degree, it gets acclimated to it. It's the same concept. If you raise prices every year, oh, great. Well, your price uh, this year is this. That's just your uh, typical you know, 4% increase over last year or whatever it is. That raise of a price is going to be so small, do 2%. If you really don't want to make more money every year and you just want to stay even than what you were, do a 2% cost of uh, living increase. Maybe do 3%. Cost of living in your area is progressive and it's set at 2%. Do 3%. That means not only are you uh, making the same amount of money, you've just added a percent onto your total gross. Anyway, play with the numbers. But those little percentages, you don't even have to tell people. I'm like, oh, we raised your your price five percent or five dollars uh, this time. On a two hundred dollar job, five dollars equates to a percentage regardless. So you don't have to tell somebody the percentage. Just let them know. Oh, you know, this year it's a uh, two hundred five for whatever. Those little increases, people aren't going to see that increase as an increase. It's the same reason that gas costs more. Yeah, we notice the big ones, but we don't remember that in 1998 the price of gas was 95 cents, right? bread bread is now like you know three dollars a loaf it used to be 99 cents a loaf it just has gone up a little bit 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 and over the time it's the price of what it is think about cars i remember when i was gosh probably in 93 because that was when uh, my parents at the time had gotten married they bought a new car and i remember that they paid eighteen thousand dollars for this buick brand new off the lot I was like, whoa, because I remember burning in my head like $18,000. You can't buy a new Kia for $18,000, right? My last new truck was like $35,000, and that was like a lower model, just Tacoma, you know? That's the cost increases that you know now when you look at it, but you didn't know as it's happening. You have to increase prices because eventually it's going to be too late and eventually, if you went to a place and said, oh, I would like to buy this truck, how much is it? And they're like, oh, it's $30,000. You're like, mm, okay, I'm going to think about it. You come back in a week, you're like, oh, great, uh, the truck was $30,000. Oh, no, it's $45,000 now. You're like, what? 
you notice a big increase. You can't do that to your customers. You have to be progressive. You have to make more every year than you did because you're faster and your experience is better, right? Pay me for my experience, not for what I do. And on top of that, you need to have a pay increase from just the cost of living. It's more money for everything else under the sun, so why not charge more? Everybody who works a normal job who gets paid by the man, they get a cost of increase, a cost of living increase every year on top of a raise, right? Why? You've been there longer, you get a raise. People get 5% raises every year. Why can't you do that in your own company? Something to think about. Getting uh, a raise for yourself and raising your prices. And the number one thing in the uh, top five uh, list of uh, mistakes with experience window cleaners make is no software. This one drives me bonkers. Only for the fact that you still talk to people and they go, oh, <laughs> I still use index cards. And they kind of laugh and a couple other old timers laugh. And then the new guys are like, what? I have a software program that can tell me how many of my customers have cats. Like they're CRMs that will track everything. What do you know? I Well, I know that everything's in alphabetical order. Give me a last name. I'll find it. That's nuts. That's nuts. No follow-ups. There's programs out there that are automated follow-ups. You know response of it. Amazing program. There's automated follow-ups. If you're just, I'd like to get a price. Boom, they're getting three emails over the next six months reminding them of who you are and that they checked with you. You use customer factor. Everything's in one area. I use uh, Google calendars for things where my office and my people in my truck all get updates and the absolute regular calendar is changed live every second. You can't do that with, you know, MapQuest and uh, uh, business cards or uh, index cards. Software is scary. I get that. People go, well, this technology stuff, I just don't get it. Of course you don't. Like, I understand that. I don't understand how a lot of the software works. I have a phone. I don't know how my phone works. It just does. But you learn what it takes to do it. Now you learn how to improve your business. There's so many software programs, especially in the age and era that we're in. Technology is just booming. Booming. It is a technology era. There's so many amazing programs out there. Look at Nice Job. Nice Job has nothing to do with the index cards, but you know what it does? is they go ahead and they follow up and send uh, requests for referrals or um, they uh, uh, reviews. Sorry. <laughs> There's companies out there like Bobby Walker from the uh, Journey of a New Entrepreneur. He's got 500 plus reviews. His company's like three years old. If you're on Google, if you're on a website, if you're on Yelp or anything and you look at a company and go, well, this guy, you know, this guy's got this, this, this guy's got 520 reviews. He wins every time, every time. He probably has the same amount of clients as somebody else. Well, he's growing leaps and bounds because of those. But that program does that. If you just show up to somebody's house and you're looking at the index card and you're like, oh, we've done you for four years. APEG, how are you? Uh, if we do a good job, let us know. Oh, yeah, I always tell my friends. That doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. If you're going to run a business, run it the right way. I'm telling you, software is huge, responsive, but amazing program. Throw it on your website. People can go get bids. There's pictures of different styles of windows. They can go ahead and number them all, tell you how many windows they are, even book the appointment all online. You didn't do anything. There is Customer Factor, there is Jobber, there is Nice Job, all these programs. Just check, type in service programs. They're crazy what they can do now. QuickBooks in general. QuickBooks, that software program is not even as involved as a lot of these other ones, but I can tell you how much money I made three years ago in the week, second week of October. I can tell you how much money I made in spring. I can tell you how much gutter cleaning I sold four years ago in fall. And I can tell you that all in seconds. Like nothing beats that. Nothing beats that. That's how you run a company. Get updated on the software. It's absolutely uh, mind blowing and awesome. Software is cool. Um, but those are the list. Again, five mistakes. You got number five, a new equipment. Number four, at no systems. Number three, at not focus selling the uh, company. 
Number two, not raising your prices. And number one is no software. You're just scared to get into the 21st century. And again, if you're doing business cards and uh, you're doing index cards and that's all the print you got, all the contact you have, it's very hard to sell somebody a box of index cards and go, this is my company. No one's paying a ton of money. But anyway, that's my show. I really do appreciate everybody who watches. By the way, I'm going to get that down. You want a cool kid sticker? Because of course you do. Because why not? It's a completely useless sticker that no one but you is going to know what it means. <laughs> I know how to sell it, don't I? But if you want a sticker, of course you do because they're awesome. Uh, thank you, by the way, for everybody posting. We had a contest going on right now when this is being recorded. And it is for a bronze wheel attachment. Free bronze wheel attachment. It's like 100 bucks. On my Facebook page, all you got to do is post a picture of your sticker in your location. If you want a sticker, put an order in. My number is 862-312-2026. This is how I make my cheddar. Is an ultimate uh, thank you from you guys. I really, really, really appreciate it. If you guys are listening uh, via iTunes or any other platform, leave a review. That would be amazing if you left a review. Uh, more amazing, again, putting orders in for me. Make sure to mention the sticker, and we will go from there. But thank you so much for being here. Hope you guys got something out of it. Either way, I hope you uh, thought it was better than a cat video. But more importantly, until next time, go out there and be epic.